Hey everybody, this is Sam Trotter here, trotting my way through Illinois, and today we are in Gridley, Illinois, at the Telephone Museum of Gridley. Now this museum is actually dedicated to the Gridley Telephone Company, so not rather than telephones themselves, but there's still a lot of interesting things here. I'm going to read somebody who knows a lot of these interesting things. Tell us who you are for the cameras. Hi, our telephone museum is a recreation of the 1920s Gridley Telephone Office. And what you see here is the uh, original room dividers that would have greeted you when you walked into the telephone museum. This would be the business office, and this would be the operator. And we have a 1910 double-walled Kellogg telephone booth that uh, people would use to make phone calls since not everyone had telephones in those days. And the bench is for waiting. Uh, many times the line was busy and you had to wait until the line was free before you could make telephone calls. All right, so how did this museum get started? Well, it's a collection of items that were used in Gridley from 1900, and at that time, when pieces of equipment were taken out of service, they were not thrown away, they were stored. And in 1970, Rogers Kaufman purchased the, the telephone company, and he found all of this equipment. He knew that it was vintage and that, that it would be valuable to save, so he refinished things and recreated um, exactly what it would have been like and started the museum in the basement of the telephone company at that time and they outgrew the basement area and in 2002 they moved over to to this museum. All right well let's uh, let's go through the church on. That's all right. <laughs> well I'd like to point out uh, First of all, this is the oldest telephone that we have. It was installed in Gridley in 1900, mm -hmm. and that is a dial system. It did not involve an operator or a switchboard. Okay. And at that, the way you used it, if your, your neighbor's number was eight, you would dial the center dial to eight. Okay. And then you would ring over here. Okay. And that would call your neighbor directly, so it did not need um, a switchboard or an operator for use. That system was very effective, but it burned in 1901 when the Gridley Business District burned. Ah. So when they replaced it, they did not replace this system. They put in a switchboard system in 1901, and that has been in operation since then. Okay, so all of these other telephones here have been... We're going to the switchboard system. Oh, yes, of course. All of them. Now, all of these, now all of, these of course, if you're old enough to remember, you just picked up the receiver, <laughs> used, the, used the crank to ring, and you would contact your contact the operator and ask for the phone number. Or you'd also ask, you could also ask for long-distance phone numbers as well. Now, now there are also over here, there are other phones here, and there's original phone books from the 1920s for Gridley in the nearby town of Meadows. Oh, and here's an old, here's an older one still. This is an original from 1906. Now all that you saw earlier was from the early 20th century. By the 1930s, they had replaced the wall phones with these Bakelite phones here. Illinois, of course, being the birthplace and nerve center of Bakelite. They were, not only all of these phones were black, unless you ordered a specific, or unless you ordered specific colors otherwise. Like these two here, these were actually ordered specifically for a person who wanted a white, wanted an ivory colored phone. Problem was, ivory didn't last, uh, ivory colors didn't last as well as black in the heat. So they moved, so eventually as time went by, they went straight to these more familiar touchstone phones. And in case you're wondering, Gridley never had dial tele, di, rotary dial phones like so many of us did, because they went straight to 
touchstone phones when they finally got rid of their switchboard in 1972. They were the second to last city in Illinois to do so. The last city in Illinois, and indeed in the lower 48 to do so, was El Paso, just eight miles away, about six months later. So all these rotary dial phones you see up here, these were actually donated. They did not actually belong to the Gridley Telephone Company or were used by people in Gridley. Now, this is Charles Oakland. He was, uh, he was manager of the Gridley Telephone Company from 1914 all the way to 1970. This is a small town. <laughs> People aren't going to last long here. And this picture is of him and, the, and his partner putting up one of the lines. Now, putting up the lines was an arduous task in itself. First, you had to dig a post hole three feet down. Then you had to take the pole, and you had to use a hook to grab onto them because they were covered in creosote, and you couldn't get the creosote all over your hands. So they had to take these poles poles with the hooks and move and move them up and try and get them up vertically to go in. And this could take hours to do, obviously. Now, these are all business phones, mostly from Grid, from Gridley's telephones. And the, sorry, these are the business phones here. And there's actually a couple of interesting things here. First, the ancestors of your smartphones. The ancestors of the thing that is recording these videos. Gridley tried being a, running a cell phone company, but it didn't work out. And these here, these lovely little phones, are not phones at all. They are actually special Jim Beam decanters made out of porcelain. The money to these went to helping infant, hard of hearing, and deaf infants. But these are not real phones, even though they are made very well. Over here, this is basically it's just some of the equipment they used for phones. As you can see, the wire cutters here. Let's see, what was over here? This third room, there are tra no, attractions. <laughs> Don't add it all. That's not right. These are artifacts for Gridley, the town of Gridley itself. This sword was an actual Civil War sword owned by George Washington Kent, who served in the war alongside his two sons. And this is a rare lithograph of the Andersonville POW prison that where Union prisoners of war were kept by the Confederacy until they were liberated after, during Sherman's march to the sea. And something else you might not know about small towns, many of them had their own small power plants. This one, Ridley had its own developed in 1909. It mostly was used to power as street light, new electric street lights than the fire department as the sign here says. It lasted about 15 years, only used 30 kilowatts of power. A lot of homes, just a few homes nowadays use that much a day, for example. And it was sold to Illinois Power in 1924, which eventually became part of Ameren in the last in the last 20 years. Now I've got something really awesome to show you. And here's something really cool. Do you notice all of these phones still have numbers on them? Well, that's because this switchboard, this original switchboard, actually still works. Now, some of you know from the old, from the past that when you d before we had dial telephones, you had to call the operator and get the, and they'd call a number. Well, the way this worked was, you call one of these phones here. My phone to pick this one. The operator would go in, 
Let's ask number, please. And if I wanted to call 174, she, and it would usually be a she in these t in those times. But take a, take one of the cables, switch it into 174, and call it up. Now, these buttons here have to do with the fact that back then a lot of these beep phones had were party lines. They were all connected to the same number. If you wanted, say, to call 66 red, you'd have 66 red, 66 blue, 66 green, or 66 white. Or black, as the case may be. And they would connect the phone, and they would connect to it, and every person on this party line would have their phone rings. Everyone, all four people would have their phones ring but even if it was only meant for one person. So what would happen is the phone would as the phone would go, so they'd be talking, and the and the other people on the line could and often did listen in, because this is how they got their news and gossip. Out on the country, sometimes as many as eighteen people would be on the same line. Because of how it was done. You, now, operators would also work as phone work as directory assistants, and the way they did that was they just used this, as you can see. It works in many ways. It's basically a phone a phone book of sorts. It has the phone numbers in it. Let's switch it over, and you can get this here for homes and businesses. Now, these were important things like. Hospitals, like the hospitals, police, fire departments, the undertaker, etc. And these were often these would be private lines. These were the people who could afford to have their line have private lines that other people couldn't get into. All right, I'm going to need one of you or both of you actually yes, to do something. Okay. Um, why don't you go to one of these telephones, turn the crank about three times, and then lift up the receiver on the side? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if you watch the board, the light lights up on, oops, it's me, Marie, on 83. So I'm mm -hmm. going to plug in, and remember, please. 83. No, you have to say another number. Pick one of the other phones. 85. So no. you just pick that? Yes, but you're going to have to talk directly into the mouthpiece. Directly, <laughs> like, so right about there. Uh huh. Yep. That is cool. Now you can talk to each other. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, when the call's finished, then if I want to, I can flip this switch and I can listen to see if you're finished with the call or if you're still talking. And then if you're finished talking, I will unplug it and go back to normal. Now, this museum is open Wednesday through Friday, 1 to 4, or on Saturdays by appointment, like what we've got here today. It's a free museum, but they do welcome donations. They'll all be appreciated, and you keep donating, you will con help contribute to making this museum grow and its history improve and help a lot of people out. So that's this amazing Telephone Museum. Thanks for, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like and subscribe to us. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Until next time, I've got to be trotting along.